What's up guys, How Vu back at it again. This is episode two of my beginner's thoughts on the Honda CBR500R. This is a 2020 with ABS. We'll do a little walk around here. I just removed the decals off the bike. Guys, all these like red stickers, I thought that were distracting from the look. It's very plain looking now in terms of like design aesthetic, but like physical paint and whatever, but um, I think it looks better. I think it looks cleaner. So we'll throw up a picture on the screen of when I got it with the little stripes, the red stripes. Not bad, definitely not bad. Um, I really didn't care for those eyebrow ones, but here it is without. And um, I think it lets you focus on the bike a little more in the headlights, so that's why I did that. Pretty happy with that. Do know that if you try to remove the tank decals, they have been clear coated over, so you'll have to deal with this little indentation and like mark that they leave behind. Um, it's like a tan line almost, so it's probably going to cost a couple hundred to get that professionally done if you choose to do that. Um, I don't know if there's a way to like remove them cleanly since they've been clear coated over. But if you're wondering about the Hello Kitty on my chain, I guess to make a long story short, I got a cat in college and people assumed that I was a cat person, even though I love dogs and cats very much equally. It's just you can't really like raise a dog in college, you know, like do good in college, get drunk and raise a dog at the same time. It's just, I don't know. To me, that sounded very impractical. So I got a cat. Cat's very low maintenance, right? People thought I was a cat person. Hello Kitty is a super cute cat. She's iconic. She's like super well known in terms of cat culture. And um, so that's why I got the Hello Kitty. I think it looks really cute. I think it looks really cool. So that is that. We are in Auburn today up in the Twisties. This is probably my uh, second time going up there. And every time I go up there, I go like up and down the mountain a couple times. I, I say up and down the mountain. It's just like up and down this like stretch of Highway 49 um, where it's, it's kind of like steep and very windy. So it's kind of scary. It's kind of like snowboarding for the first time, right? Like, um, and I'm still, I've only done, done it four times, four or five times up and down the mountain or something like that. And, you know, definitely on in, when you snowboard, you can fall. But on the bike, I'm not seeing that that's going to be an option. So I'm trying not to do that. So I'd be lying to you if I told you I will, wasn't scared. I wouldn't say scared shitless, but definitely definitely a good amount of fear going up and down the mountain and just, you know, trying to enjoy myself, trying to be present and, um, you know, taking that as a learning experience with, uh, with still being kind of nervous going up and down the mountain. I'm not really going fast either. Um, the signs, if the road sign says take it at 15, I'm generally taking it at like 15 to 20. Um, whereas in a car, a lot of times I see those signs, it's like double for me. In my BRZ, it's very low to the ground, kind of a sports car. Um, it's, a, it's just a general hard and fast rule. But on the motorcycle, I have to take it pretty much at the speed the sign says. Um, but some of them are weird. Sometimes there's like not a sign in the road when I felt like there should have been. And then sometimes it'll be like 20 miles per hour, like turn sign. And then I'm like, whoa, that was like nothing. So it's kind of like, I, I don't even, don't even pay too much attention to that. But definitely use it as a guide when you're starting out. Um, ergonomics of the bike. I was riding it for three hours today. Um, it's pretty upright with a fairly small amount of lean. You can lean more if you want to, like if you want to be more aggressive with the riding and you're in the twisties and you want a little more like confidence inspiring, like very good steering input position, then yes, yeah, sink a little lower, but you can definitely sit straight up for commuting or I definitely can. I'm 5'8", 135 pounds, 30 inch inseam and you know, it's it's whatever I need it to be. Comfort is not an issue on the bike. I can't flat foot it, so I have to like kind of like do little duck walks when I need to adjust the bike while I'm sitting on it. So, it you know, that's that's a thing you have to deal with. But honestly, if you're moving forward, you should just be using the clutch, you know, and just making your life easier. So it's really only just reversing it. And when, you know, you, that doesn't have to happen that often and for not, not extended amounts of time. So no problem there. Highway riding. Um, I know a lot of people want to know about highway riding. The 500, 471cc engine does perfectly fine on the highway. I cruise at the highway at 75. I think it sits at 6,000 RPMs exactly around there. And um, it's just fine. There's no vibrations. There's no, like, discomfort. The engine's not stressed. And then, so I'm just cruising at 75. That's okay for me, you know, pretty much in any lane but the left lane I can be do doing that. And if I need to pass somebody, some fool who's on his phone texting or, like, maybe a truck or just maybe want to get out of a certain situation... I can roll on the throttle and have more than enough power to get where I need to be. So, guys, that's where we stand in terms of highway riding. It's everything you need on the highway, okay? If you're trying to be like a rocket ship and you're trying to, like, 
launch against like Ferraris and just like really just try to essentially street race with sports cars, you're not going to have a good time. This bike is really not that kind of bike and it doesn't have that kind of power. It doesn't have that kind of torque. Okay, so just know that. It's just really an all-around bike for everyday use dressed up in extremely aggressive styling. It will fool nine people out of ten, right, that this bike will look faster than it actually is. So that's, that's a cool thing. I think that's a plus in my book because you get to enjoy the cool, aggressive looks and still have a beginner-friendly bike that's super economical on gas, gets you everywhere you need to be in style, quick, right, and reliable like that's cool to me um so don't think of this bike as like this this sports sports like pocket rocket that's gonna like just fly down the highway and just like make huge like rocket ship sounds like that's not that's not the case so don't don't get your hopes up if that's what you're expecting guys um it's it's barely not gonna wheelie i think i've seen maybe like a couple videos on youtube where someone gets the wheel in the air for like a tiny amount of time but definitely nothing that i would call a wheelie so you can rule that out if you're looking to do more like hooligan style riding and i'm not judging that negatively in any way i just mean that if you're trying to do hooligan type shit this is not the bike for you it just doesn't have that kind of power that like get up and go it's not gonna like buck you off like you're at the rodeo so if that's some if you like like that and that is fun to do I definitely get that so if that's if you're big on that the CBR 500 R is not the bike for you um, I think overall in general Honda designs a lot of their cars with this practicality in mind like you're driving this car every day so it needs to be enjoyable it needs to be reliable it needs to be affordable you know it needs to be economical on gas it needs to it look good it needs to be you know those are kind of like their values when they build things um with the exception of like the race replica i think r is that what rr stands for but the the truly performance motorcycles and cars that they make of course that's for you know the sport of driving but by and large, a lot of Honda vehicles, whether you're talking about a Civic or an Accord or the CBR 500R, you know, they, they kind of build them to be all-around good vehicles. And to be an all-around good vehicle, there's not any one department that it can lack in, right? Like if you're driving a vehicle every day and you need to go on the highway, which is a normal thing to expect from a car, you need to be able to perform on the highway when you need to. And, you know, these, these Honda engines, the CBR 500R, it, it can do just that, right? So I think it's a perfect everyday motorcycle. And that's kind of how I feel about Honda in general. I kind of like their their ideals, right? It's just, for the most part, if it's not specifically a sport bike, the RR series, it's going to be more practical. Like, Honda always has that practicality. So if you're looking to be a hooligan, I don't even know if Honda's the right brand for you unless you maybe can choose between, like, two models that maybe will be good for you if you're a hooligan. Um, so, yeah, man, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, I do want to talk about the Facebook group, guys. So if you're looking to buy a bike or you're new to riding, something I would recommend, something that I've learned um, in these past couple months is the Facebook group. If you buy a bike, no matter what bike you buy, one of the first things you should do is go on your computer, go on your phone, and search for the Facebook group corresponding to the bike that you bought. So for me, it's the Honda CBR500R Facebook group. It's usually ran by a moderator or like an administrator that has to approve you, but they'll definitely approve you if you just send the request. And it's just like a huge knowledge base of people who own this vehicle, people who love this vehicle, people who hate this vehicle. You know, it's just like you can't get too much knowledge, especially from other people in the same boat as you, right? There's a search function. You can type in oil change. You can type in fender eliminator. You can type in Yoshimura exhaust, and you'll see pictures and threads and helpful information. It's just like... It's so invaluable to be a part of this group. And then I, I can't tell you how many questions I've asked, how many questions I've answered, how many pictures I've seen. It's just real cool stuff, man. Like, you would be doing yourself a huge disservice if you were not a part of whatever Facebook group um, there is for your motorcycle. So even if you're looking to buy a bike, you can join the group and just, like, ask people questions, dude, like, and just get really, really good information. Um, I think it's even more essential than, like, an owner's manual. Um, people are probably going to disagree with me with that, but in all honesty, like, you can always ask somebody, and, like, you'll get a lot more information. Um, if you're trying to do ser service yourself, you should probably have the Honda, like, f official Honda manual to tell you how to do that, but the Facebook group is amazing. Do not sleep on the Facebook groups. Um... Miles per gallon, fuel economy, no complaints there. About 250, 260 is what I've stretched it at, but I definitely could have gone more than that. I just, you know, didn't want to risk it too much. I didn't want to do like a complete, you know, full to empty test. So that was 
average riding for me, 260 per tank. I think I saw on the Facebook group somewhere that this dude uh, did the actual test, and he kept it under 50 miles per hour and just r rode really conservatively, and I think he got like 340, 350 or something like that to his tank. So that was pretty cool. I just did the oil change, the 600-mile service, which is an oil filter change. It was a piece of cake. Just remove the oil filter. Uh, I, I changed the drain plug out to like this one with a magnet on it. I think it's called the gold plug, and it just kind of like pulls little tiny little metal materials that might be floating around in your oil so they don't just kind of get into the moving parts of the engine, I guess, is the idea of it. So I did that. It takes three quarts of oil. That ended up costing me 35 bucks. I went with the full synthetic from Honda, HP4, I believe it's called, the red bottles. It's easy because it's 2.9 quarts, basically three quarts, and you just dump all the bottles in, and then you're good to go. I think the oil filter from Honda cost me about 10 to 12 bucks on Amazon. And yeah, I cleaned the chain and I lubed the chain as well. I washed the bike. I also used the Pro Honda brand of chain lube and chain cleaner. So I try to do that maybe like every 500 miles, try to clean and lube the chain. I really don't enjoy doing it that much. It's kind of tedious, but um, it must be done. I need to get in the habit of doing more work on my bike. So... Yeah, I think that's all that I had to say about the bike today. I'm pretty much going to end this video here. I think 12 minutes is a good length. It's like not too long, but not too short. If there's anything you guys want to know about the bike, just drop me a question in the comments. Like I said, I'm on 750 miles, and I just want to share my experiences with this bike. Um, kind of like as unbiased as I know how to be. And I hope I come across that way because this is kind of like for beginner riders who are shopping for bikes, beginners for, in, for motorcycles in general, and people who specifically want this bike. Um, I think this would be good information to have if you are in one of those three camps. So that's all I have, guys. Everyone stay safe out there, COVID-19. Everything's starting to open back up here in Northern California. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if uh, we've really done anything to uh, combat this issue or if there's going to be a second wave or something like that. I truly don't know and it truly seems kind of weird to think about things going back to normal. It just doesn't seem like that's going to be the case all in all. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody who subscribed and liked the video and made a comment. I, I really appreciate that. That's really cool that you know like you guys are responding back and just I, I love to see love on YouTube you know like and it's cool that I have this small channel now this tiny little video right and uh, already just seeing the love I haven't gotten any hate yet that's I guess that's what I really mean I haven't gotten any hate yet and there's like a small moment of time where that's true right like for, until that moment where you get your first hater um, so that's it guys thank